Open world games are art. But what makes them so good? Is it the amazing graphics, or is it the size of the massive maps? For a long time I couldn't put into words just how much I enjoyed playing these games, but now I finally get it, and it's much deeper and intricate than I thought. But to understand what makes an open world game so good, I think we need to take a look at the first open world games ever made. These are early 20th century open world games, and while their gameplay is nothing spectacular, they mark the era of games where you can explore and do whatever you want. As technology advanced, these were very quickly improved, as just 8 years after these games, multiple 3D games would revolutionize the open world space. Games like Super Mario and then eventually GTA 3 would show the beginning of open world 3D graphics. These games showed us just how much we can make games like real life. Okay, maybe GTA 3 is isn't quite real life, but it was back then. These games spawned in the idea of seemingly infinite exploration and discovery. They revolutionized a game world where you are the creator of infinite possibilities and outcomes. But what happens when we up the graphics? When we make the game feel like, you know, real life? As games grew even further and increasingly impressive releases continued to mark milestones in gaming technology, we were blessed with some of the most beautiful and jaw-dropping games of the 21st century. But does a good-looking open-world game mean it's good? Well, let's take Minecraft for example. While I do think Minecraft looks good, it doesn't necessarily have insane graphics. Minecraft is a charmingly simple block game, but there's no hiding from its map because it's massive. Bigger than Neptune massive. But with that mass comes infinite loneliness. When I used to play Minecraft as a kid, it felt so lonely because of how big the map was and how much there was to do. Feelings like this where the entire world is yours, where you can go anywhere and try anything without holding you back, is why I love open world games so much. To get lost in another world and to find yourself exploring the world as if you were freshly born into a new life sounds pretty nerdy to be fair, but open world games achieved this feeling flawlessly. Let me ask you, what do these three games have in common? Elden Ring, Minecraft, and The Legend of Zelda. Sure, they're all open world, but these are starkly different games with varying levels of graphics and age. But regardless of the graphics and technology used to create them, what all three of them do to a point's precision, and what's far more important, is when a game can effectively capture its atmosphere. Subnautica is a scary game where you can explore the depths of another scary planet's ocean, where you are met with multiple different scary sea creatures, wreckages, and biomes. Did I mention it was scary? It's an open world paradise where the only limits are where you're willing to go, and the only thing holding you back is your fear of what you can't see. Subnautica captures the atmosphere of vastness that's full of creeping life so well that it's mind-blowing. I remember exploring the backside of the massive shipwreck in the game, seeing the massive drop off in the water, and literally leaving the game and doing something else. The ability to portray such a magical and ethereal atmosphere is so overlooked in video games when you play them. All good games have a certain atmosphere to them. Minecraft's atmosphere is a lonely, desolate, but intriguing one. Subnautica's is magical and vast. Elden Ring's is fantasy-like, dark and grim but beautiful. Good open world games can show what they are by piercing their atmosphere deep into your emotions while you play, by shoving it directly in your face right when you play in a grand and fantastic way, or by slowly seeping it deep into your soul while you play over time, and experience it one thought at a time. These games are unique and they are carefully crafted to leave you, the consumer, with an experience you can remember. A good atmosphere not only leaves a mark on the game itself, but also on you, the player. As much as an atmosphere can be captivating and game-changing, I would like to talk about the importance of choice. Being able to do exactly what you want is what creates the magic for me. Being able to go to the top of any mountain or building and just look around at the map and just watch. I would like to mention a very underrated map that I don't hear enough love for. The Genshin Impact map is stunningly beautiful. I know I'm about to get 5 trillion dislikes because people hate Genshin Impact, but if you take one second to look around, the map is excruciatingly beautiful. Not in graphics, but in size and choice. You can climb wherever and walk wherever you want in Genshin Impact. There are no limits. Climb wherever and explore the vast unending hills and towns of the game. If you do take the long time to climb atop the massive hills and mountains, you are met with a view so grand that when I saw it for the first time in game, it actually inspired me. This actual freedom that games like Genshin Impact give you is just unmatched to other games for me. The true essence of an open game for me is the actual ability to explore to your wit's end, to discover exactly what you want to discover, and to play exactly how you want to play. Some games may not have the graphics that the biggest games have, and that's okay. But for me, when a game breaks all defying factors and gives the characters the freedom that they so choose, that to me is a true open world game. That to me is art.
Games like Minecraft are lonely, and depending on how you see it, that could either be a flaw in the game or a plus. But there's no denying the beauty of immersivity. Like Atmosphere, the idea of an immersive land where you just know something is out there, that something is there to interact with you, and that there's potentially something watching you is such a captivating feeling. In Souls-like games specifically, I am insanely impressed with the utter amount of different beasts and monsters and humans that you interact with throughout your exploration of the map. The sheer amount of things that you can constantly be occupied with and find is mind-blowing. Alongside the massive size of a map like Elden Ring, for example, there are a plethora of interesting easter eggs and findings that you can come across throughout your gameplay. To be able to do and find what you want and also know that you won't be disappointed is such a fascinating feeling when you play games like these, and it's a feeling that for people like me, I could never get enough of. I think it's pretty fair to say that all these great open world games have a certain feeling to them. The way they portray their own sense of greatness is something that for a long time I couldn't quite put my tongue on. That was until I sat down and truly played a game, and watched and absorbed all the great things about them, that it made perfect sense. Once you play a good video game, you realize that the most important thing is passion. The most important thing is the love that was had for the game. I would like to talk about a game that marks a landmark in gaming history, a game that is so beautifully crafted with an obvious amount of passion. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game that not only combines its beautifully crafted atmosphere that is immersive and beautiful, but also combines that with the amount of choice to go and do whatever you want. Red Dead Redemption was simply meant as a passion project for Rockstar that wasn't supposed to hold a candle to GTA 5. Now, I can be like every other game journalist and do a deep analysis of the game and try to pitch you how good it is, but in the words of my girlfriend who rarely plays video games because they're not captivating and the maps are quote, not good enough, it is a game that she has played for 8 hours straight, over and over, just because she wants to view the map and walk around one more time. It is a game that for her, connected her more to nature. Red Dead Redemption, just like Minecraft, is a lonely game. You're probably sick of me talking about how Minecraft is so lonely, but it's for good reason, because it's a feeling that captures what I think of an open world game. For games like this and like Red Dead Redemption, there are a million things to do, but at the same time, none at all. You can experience the never-ending quests and chores that you can endlessly achieve and help people with. But what's more than that, and what's just as endless, is the beauty of the nothingness of some parts of the map. The beauty of endless discovery. The beauty of the amount of things to do, and the amount of things to not. I've played many open world games, but few capture the essence of the ability to be alive, and the ability to explore. The ability to view the endless beauty of the map on your own terms, to have nothing holding you back but the time that it might take to travel there. But when they do capture it, and when you can climb that mountain and sit there, when you can walk as far as your heart desires, and when you can simply exhaust the humanistic desire to explore until you feel like you've seen it all, that to me is the art I've been talking about. I apologize for the onslaught of yapping that just occurred, but this feeling of exploration is nothing new, which is why we play open world games in the first place. It's not new because humans on a fundamental level like to explore, but to be honest, outside of all the fanatics, these games also do something a bit more, and in the corniest sounding way possible, they inspire us to fulfill that desire to explore in real life. They inspire us to explore in our own ways, in the same way that we shouldn't be bound by the walls in video games, we shouldn't be bound by the walls of our own rooms. What open world games have done for me, and in a way that I define as art is the art of inspiration to go and achieve exploration of things beyond our confines. What these games try to achieve with their insane maps, graphics, and atmospheres is a product that is as close to real life as possible, and as fantastic and beautiful as real life. That is why they are art, because they attempt to connect the real life human desire to explore and create another world to satisfy that urge. But it's also a statement, a statement to us that we also have the capacity to explore, that our urge to discover is real. And without getting too philosophical in a video game video, I I think we should at least try to satisfy that urge, in a way that makes us feel alive.